Hello my friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Karen and I am a swatching nerd. Um, I just spent the last mm, week and a half, maybe two weeks, um, while my mom was here with me. Um, we sat in my room and we just hung out together. And while we were doing that, I swatched six sets of pencils, six plus a few, um, all together. So not only do I have my swatch charts that are the separate sets of pencils, I now also have them in their, um, all together in their entirety. So I learned a little bit while I was doing this about my pencils, especially when um, you're going from one pencil to the next to the next. Um, some of the stuff surprised me. Um, some favorites came out, some not so favorites came out. And I thought that I would share a little bit with you about what I learned and, uh, and, and that's it. So I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> um, this took me, I think, 19, 19 pages to get all of my sets <clears throat> swatched out. And I, I chose to do them on white, even though I um, do do more pages on the, um, on the mid-tone papers, um, mostly just because I wanted a really clear... Um, true to color um, swatch. So that's why I chose to do them on white. So the colors, um, the sets that I swatched, I swatched my Prismas, I swatched Luminance, I swatched Derwent Color Soft, I swatched Derwent Light Fast and Derwent Drawing, um, Polychromos and Holbein. Those were the ones that I swatched in their entirety or um, to the best of my ability in their entirety. I would not be surprised if I missed a couple here and there because it was a very daunting task, but I really, really wanted to do it. Um, and then because I'm, like I said in the intro, I'm kind of a swatching nerd. Um, I really wanted each page to, to be as close to a full color family as I could get. So um, I think that you can kind of tell what I'm talking about. These are like mostly all kind of the peaches. Then I have the, the um, oranges going into the orange reds. Then I have the orange reds and I had to kind of work my way into starting to go into the blue reds. Then we have our uh, pinks going in, then I had the pinky purples, and then going into the blue purples, blue purples, going into the, or blue, purpley blues, <laughs> going into the um, more green blues, um, then to the greens, then to the more yellow greens, and working into the more brown greens. Then I have the browns, um, like the yellow browns, and then I have the red browns, um, then kind of like even more of the reddish toned um, colors. And some of them, you know, I didn't know where to put them. So they're not, you know, this is not a perfect necessarily in color order swatch chart, but it works for me. So I have them, then I have the cool grays on one page and the warm grays on the other. So the reason that I, um, uh, what was I going to say? The reason that I did this, I don't know. Oh, the reason that I used the, I added some, um, a few Pablos and a few Arctics um, in there to kind of complete a page. So if I, you know, had run out of colors um, and I didn't want these greenish colors to be on my more pure blue page. Then I pulled out some, um, I pulled out some Pablos and some Arctics to kind of f fill in just, just because I wanted the pages to be pretty. So anyway, that's why I did that. So bear with me while I put these all back kind of in order the way I had them. 
Um, okay, so those are the those are the sets. Those are um, the sets that I have and the sets that I um, use a lot. I will say that I do have the Pablos as well, and. Um, I don't know if my tastes have changed. I don't know if my style of coloring has changed, but um, in swatching out the Pablos, for me personally, I just did not like them enough for me to include them in my charts because this is kind of my charts of, um, I can pull any pencil off of this, um, off of these charts and use it and know that I'm going to be happy with the results. So I left off my Pablos and I did try and include the Arctic's colors that are not, um, that are unique colors. In other words, they're not colors that um, I can find in Prismacolor as well. So Oh, there's a lot that I, I, I had to make notes on this one because I was afraid I was going to forget um, talking about what I wanted to tell you. Okay, so firstly, some things that I discovered. Um, I, I love my Prismas. I know that I love my Prismas. Um, but in swatching them on this white paper, they were not my favorite. Um that being said, they are still my favorite pencil because I I know them. I know um, I know how they work. I know how to use them, um, and so they're still um, my number one favorite pencil. Um, the pencil set that I well, let's see. Should we go? Over, let's go over the ones that I um, that were maybe a surprise. Um, Derwent Color Soft. When I, I've had those for quite a while, um, and I um, thought, for some reason in my head, that I did not like them. Um, I was very wrong. I really, really like the Derwent Color Soft. They are um, soft and creamy and lovely, just like Prismas. So um, I will be using those. Um, much more often than um, than I was before because they're really nice. Um, Holbein's. I think Holbein's are one of those pencils that people either love or hate, or maybe hate is a strong word, but they either like them or they don't like them. Um, I love them. Uh, they are also a smooth and creamy and smushable, mushable um, pencil. And they worked, you know, they work beautifully with the um, Prismacolors. Um, okay, so a couple of surprises. Um, I fell in love with my Polychromos again. Um, they were very smooth and just I just like swatching them was just like such a pleasure I really enjoyed it um falling in love with Derwent Lightfast those are also another pencil that I really um I really am enjoying and I'm going to use them more I just I feel like I'm wasting um I'm wasting I'm so <laughs> I'm wasting all these beautiful pencils that I have I've got like um, you know, I've got my Prismacolors, which here, I'll just, I'll just give you an example. I'll show you like my Prismacolors. Okay. So here's my Prismacolors and they're well used. I've got, I've got a, um, in, in almost all of the colors, they're, um, they're short. They've got short ones and long ones, and they're definitely a used set of pencils. So we already know how much I love my Prismacolors. But <laughs> then I come in and I pull out like my polychromos. And look how, I mean, oh, seriously, I just love, I, part of me hates to use them because I love shiny new pencils. There are a few in here. And it's funny because these are the ones that I use um, or used a lot when I was doing animals. So um, these got used a lot. Um, but a lot of them have not been used, and I'm going to remedy that. Um, 
I've got, this is the same situation with my Holbeins. I've had my Holbeins for over a year. Um, and they are just, you know, full. They're long, long pencils because I don't use them enough. And I'm going to remedy that. Especially, especially now that they are available to buy open stock. Um, which means that I can replace one at any time that I want to. And honestly, when you compare the price of the Holbeins compared to, say, the... Um, the Karen Dash, uh, the the Luminance, they're they're right in there in that range of any of the other um, artist quality pencils. They're not um, they're not that out of reach, unattainable pencil anymore. So if you wanted to use um, to try the Holbeins, you absolutely could try them um, by purchasing them through Dick Blick. Okay, I'm getting off topic here. Um, so anyway, that's kind of why I did this because I wanted to use the pencils that I have. And here's the really cool thing that I'm finding is that, um, a, yes, there are some colors that are really similar, um, across sets. Um, but I don't mind that because the different pencils have different properties. So, you know, let's say I wanted to use a, um, I have this tiny little detailed area and I wanted to use this Prism pomegranate, um, but Prismas are so soft and they don't, you know, they don't care, have that sharp point. So, I mean, this might not be the most perfect um, uh, comparison, but so then I could just, I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'll just use the Light Fast Magenta instead. It's a firmer um, pencil that holds its point better, but the colors are similar. Um kind of similar here you know there's there's a lot that are that are really that are really similar but again I don't I don't mind um let's see what else okay so I've had I have had a lot of people ask me um about different pencils like what do you think about these pencils how do how do they compare to you know pencil a to pencil b and all of that stuff and you get so so many um, varying opinions on pencils. We all know that they're very subjective. What what one person loves, another person um, not so much. And one of the things that I think plays a huge factor in this, and I, I think I've touched on this before, but I'm just going to touch on it again really quick, is your climate and the paper that you're using. Um, and and the and the biggest example of this is the Prismacolors with the um the wax bloom issue. Um not only the wax bloom issue, but also the smear smearing issue. There's a lot of people that do not want to use Prismacolors because of the wax bloom or because they they um smear very easily. I have never had that problem. And it's not anything that I am doing special. I, I truly think that it's the climate that I'm in. I live in a very warm, um, very dry, and the dry is probably the biggest factor um, because we all kind of live in air-conditioned homes nowadays. But um, the dry factor, I think, is, is going to have a huge if, impact on how your pencils um, perform. If, you're, um, if you live in a very humid climate, you, one brand of pencils might perform completely differently than for somebody in a dry climate. So I, I guess the reason that I'm telling you that is, yes, listen to the reviews and listen to what people say. I mean, a bad pencil is just a bad pencil, you know, but um, if you want to, if you're interested in trying a certain pencil, I would definitely get a couple open stock if you can to try them and not just completely listen to what other people are saying because, again, the climate that they live in um, is going to have a big uh, effect on how that pencil performs. Okay, so this is how I did these to keep from being um, completely um, overwhelming because there was no way I was going to pull out every single one of my pencils and um, and try, try and swatch them. So... I pulled out all my sets and I keep them all in those little, um, those little, um, uh, pencil cases. Um, so I pulled out all of my, I pulled them all out. 
and I started with color families. So from each set of my pencils, I pulled out the creams and the yellows. Um, and, and not the orangey yellows. I stuck with like just the, the true yellows. So I pulled those all out. And I, and I use these, these um, shoebox lids. I have several of these. Um, I get them, um, I got these all on, um, on sale at like Michael's, I think, when you can get them, when you get them on sale, they're really, really cheap. And so, so um, the colored ones that I'm no longer using are now my organization boxes. And it really helps to keep my pencils from sliding all over the desk and um, keeps them in groups of, of colors while I was doing this. So I would swatch out the those colors and then I would put those all away. Um, and then I would go to the next and I would pull um, the orangey yellows from every set and I would and I would kind of get those in order. I did a lot of little mini swatches on a piece of paper <laughs> so that I could kind of get them in the order that I kind of felt like they should go. Um, and I just continued on that way, just doing it by color family, one section at a time. And then it's not quite so overwhelming because I do tend to put my pencils um, in this color order for every set that I have. It's kind of the color order that works best for me, going from the yellows to the oranges to the reds pinks, purples, blues, greens, browns. So that's what works best for me. So it was pretty easy for me to pull those um, little groupings of pencils and just swatch them out like that. So as you can see, as you can see, there's, there's quite a few places where I've cut and pasted um, something in here where I either made a mistake or I changed my mind. So they're not, they're not perfect, but they're, um, they're, they're close enough. They're good enough for, for, for what I need them to be. So um, what I really, I, and I'm just really, really enjoying being able to look um, at a glance at all of my purples. Um, and, and, and it just makes it, I, it makes it really nice to be able to, to, pull some colors and, and do some color blends that I normally wouldn't get if I was only using one pencil brand. Um, you know, you can see that there's some really beautiful reddish, um, the kind of the red based purples in here um, that would just blend and look really pretty together. And I personally have not found a pencil that does not play well to play any two pencils or three pencils that don't play well together. So far, all of my pencils have played really well together. So I might as well use them. Um, I've got them. And so that is why I did all of this. Um, I am going to photograph all of these um, pages. Um, the numbers that you see that I have here... Those are the numbers you can see that they're all out of order. They're not, um, they're not labeled one through, you know, whatever. God, I can't even, <laughs> 35 times 19. That's how many pencils are swatched here. Um, but the numbers that you see here are my um, organization numbers for the pencils. So when I look at my sheet here and I, and I want, um, you know, to choose this polychromos ultramarine, I know that the polychromos um uh, notebook folder. What is the thing called? <laughs> um, yeah, that. Um, if I go to number, if I find number 52 in that folder, that's going to be that color. So it makes it really, really easy for me to find any color that I want in all of my sets. Um, but I am going to photograph all of these because I do have a couple of friends who want the list. Um, it is not perfect. It is not um, done as a, you know, per perfect, no mistake swatch chart. It is just my swatch chart um, that I'm going to put into a PDF. So um, if anybody, you know, if, 
if anybody really wants this for um, their own reference, if they feel like, um, oh, I really want, um, I want that because she's done, <laughs> she's done all the work and I can, um, you know, swatch my own kind of using what I've done here as a guide, um, you feel free to reach out to me and let me know. Um, and if I can get it to you, I will. Um, so, yeah, so I'm pretty excited about actually using these in, in, um, in real time working, um, on an actual page. I'm still, um, I'm still under the, trying to figure out if I want to um, stick with one brand of pencil when I do some coloring um, for the channel or if I want to just use every, you know, use anything that I have um, to put on that page. I, it's really hard because some of you want um, to see how other pencils work and to see, um, you know, how they, how they work with with each other and some of you um you know are doing a specific color along and you'll be upset with me if i throw in a luminance or a light fast or whatever that and you don't have it um that being said now that i have these charts um it's possible that if i do throw in another color a crazy color, a brand, like let's say Holbein, and you don't have Holbein, um, I could throw this chart up here in view. Um, and for example, if I were to say, oh, look, <laughs> I was going to pick some of these and I looked at them and they're they're all Holbein. Um, Holbein has a lot of greens, a lot of greens. So there's going to be, you're going to see a lot of Holbeins on here. But <laughs> Every time I look at one and go, oh, that's a good example. It turns out to be a Holbein. Okay, so here's an example. Let's say I pull Holbein Malachite Green to use in a color, um, in a color along. I can I can pull this up and go, all right, but look, you could use this one or you could use this one or this one. You know, so maybe, maybe I'll do that. Um, it might make for a slightly longer video, but I think it might, I think it might be a little bit, it more interesting than just, um, you know, sticking with nothing but Prismacolors all the time for, um, for the coloring. I hope, I hope that's how you guys feel. Anyway, um, it, it was, I am not going to lie to you. This was a, a very big task, but, um, I'm very glad that I did it. Um, I think it's going to be a great tool for me to use and, um, I did. I learned a lot. Oh, what I didn't talk about, the surprise of what I didn't like. The <laughs> um, don't, don't hate me for this, you guys, um, but I'm going to tell you that out of all of the sets that I mentioned, the Prismas, the Luminance, the Color Soft, the Polychromos, the Holbein, the Light Fast, and the Derwent Drawing, um, including some Arctics, I liked the Luminance the least. I can't believe I'm saying that, but it's true. Um, I still love the skin tone colors. Um, I will continue to use those colors in portrait work. But when it came to swatching um, just straight colors, and this might be a bad example because this color um, in Luminance always gives me problems. Oh, by the way, you are going to have a couple of colors in every set that don't perform the same as um, the rest of your colors. And I think that that's because of pigments, because this Luminance Chrysocola Blue, it's a terrible, <laughs> it was a terrible color to swatch. Um, but now that I think about it in Polychro in uh, Prismas, there's a color similar to this that's also, it's either... Um, Let's see, which one was it? Do I have it on here? Maybe I just chose to not even put it on here. Um, which one was it? I can't think right now. I'm having a, I'm having a minute to where I can't, my brain has stopped working. Um, but anyway, there's a color in, in, in Prismas um, that is really bad um, like this too. Where was I going with this? Oh yeah, Luminance. Um, 
I find I was finding them um, drier. Um, they weren't as creamy as any of the other sets that I swatched, and um, that was a that was kind of a big surprise for me. I was just not a, they were not my favorite one to swatch. Um, that being said, I still think that when you blend them with other colors, if you blend them with um, light fast, if you blend them with prismas, um, the the uh, the other the other set that you are going to be using um, kind of adds to the um, smoothness and the creaminess of them. Um, especially maybe if you put a layer of that down first and then the luminance over the top, um, that really does help to to make the luminance feel less um, dry and. I don't want to say the word scratchy because I've tried some scratchy pencils. Um, so I don't want to use the word scratchy, but they're definitely drier um, to use than any of the other pencils that I mentioned. So that was my biggest, that was my big surprise because I thought, you know, luminance were going to be up there high in my, in my favorites. So they were actually, um, they were actually near the bottom. <laughs> of what I of what I liked so I did yeah so I learned a lot and um uh yeah I have I had some that I that I went ahead and wrote um like this luminance ultramarine is almost exactly like the uh, prismacolor caribbean sea so I just kind of scribbled that in there so that um I didn't have to swatch caribbean sea um as well so, um, yeah, there you go. That's, that is what, um, I have been doing for the last couple of weeks. And, um, I, I don't know if this video helped you or didn't help you, but, um, uh, hopefully it did. So <laughs> that is all until I see you guys for the next video. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Happy coloring. Bye.